Good evening, Bunker Hill Baptist Church, and it is good to be with you again tonight. Uh, this will probably be our last streaming session that we have because we're fixing to start resuming some uh, church activities now, and I'll be mentioning that in just a little bit. But it has been an ordeal uh, that we've gone through, and we've tried to be as safe as possible. Uh, preventing any kind of spread of it, but I think we're at the point now that where we can properly social distance, uh, wear your mask uh, coming in and going out, and uh, if you're in close proximity of somebody in the sanctuary, uh, please try to wear your mask. Uh, it's not mandatory, but I encourage you to do that uh, for safety's sake. Um, here's our lineup that we're gonna be having uh, uh, for church, uh, regular church service will be at 11 a.m. on Sunday morning. Sunday evening, we'll be meeting uh, in the sanctuary at uh, 6 o'clock. Uh, on Wednesday, we'll be meeting here in the fellowship hall. Uh, for a time, there will be no meal, uh, no children's activities through this month of uh, September uh, to see how everything progresses. We don't want to uh, go too fast, but we don't want to go uh, much slower than where we've gone right now. Um, and then a little reminder that uh, uh, starting September the 20th, uh, we'll begin Children's Church. and. Uh, uh, at 11 o'clock in the old sanctuary, uh, they'll be meeting there. There'll be somebody to open the front door to the church, uh, old sanctuary, to get them in. There'll be people there. Uh, we'll practice the same kind of distance with masks and everything. But we want to try to go ahead and get that started. Um, and that'll be on the 20th. And you'll be getting some more information uh, concerning that uh, as the time draws closer to September the 20th. And then on the 20th, the church council will be meeting again to reevaluate how the month of September has been going as far as worship. If we can add other stuff, we will at that time. And hopefully it won't be long before we can open up Sunday school in some manner and some form. So be praying for us, be praying for the church that uh, um, we can get all get back together and uh, safely worship together. Um, continue to pray for the nominating committee uh, who are working to try to fill teacher slots and other positions in our church as well. Uh, one other note, uh, we well, you know we've already had our deacon nominations and uh, should be, be being installed in September, but we're going to be just a little bit late with that. Uh, but our deacon uh, elections uh, will take place uh, in the morning service of September the 13th. And... Uh, there will be, uh, there's six names on there. You can vote to up to four men. Uh, you can vote for less if that's what you feel like, but no more than four uh, is all you'll be able to uh, vote for. And uh, for those of you who don't feel like you still need to come and you would like to have opportunity to vote, we do have some uh, absentee ballots that you can vote uh, and you can bring them and drop them in the drop box before September the 13th or either you can call me or Will, call the church office, say you've got the ballots and you would like us to come by and pick them up and we'll be glad to do that so we can get a vote and we want everybody uh, in the church uh, uh, that wants to vote to have an opportunity to vote uh, so take note of that and uh, I think that is all the announcements that I need to make at this moment I uh, need to just remember those who are on our prayer list uh, continue to pray for Mr. Fred Harrod as he's going through his cancer treatments and uh, Kenny Carson uh, uh, keep praying for him Miss Marguerite is still in the swing bed hopefully she may get gone home sometime this week and I know she's ready to do that. Continue to pray for Ricky Ladner uh, who has a COVID-19. Also Miss Marie uh, Brewer in the Grove has COVID-19 as well. And uh, pray for Brother Daryl Daniel's sister, uh, Lisa. Uh, she's being diagnosed with uh, a, an aggressive form of uh, breast cancer. Uh, she's having a port put in today, uh, and so please keep her on your prayer list as well. And uh, let's not forget the ones who've lost loved ones. Uh, 
and those who are suffering right now because of the virus. Uh, continue to pray that God would work uh, in bringing an end to this uh, virus and uh, uh, that no one uh, would continue to have to suffer through this any longer than, than God intends for us to. But we know that he's in control and that we know that he has a plan. And so we continue to go before his throne and to, to make intercession for these who are sick and for these who have this virus and for our church as a whole. Let us go to our Lord in prayer. Father God, we bow in your presence right now. And Father, we do thank you for the gift of life itself. And Father, to all of the benefits and the blessings that we receive from being your children. Lord, your mercy and your love and your grace is theirs every day for us uh, to enjoy. Every morning that we wake up, Father, you give us uh, uh, new graces for that day, and we thank you for that. Father, we do uh, ask you to forgive us for any sin that we have in our life this evening, and Lord, that uh, you would just uh, continue to bless us, uh, Father, with your love and your mercy. Father, we do pray, uh, especially for these who are on our prayer list, our ongoing prayer list, those who are shut in, and uh, Father, those uh, who have just been sort of locked away at home, Lord, because of this virus. Father, I pray that you administer to them through your Holy Spirit. And Father, that those who are sick, that through the doctors and nurses, uh, Father, you'll promote healing in their body, and we'll thank you for that. We do pray, Father, for those who are... Uh, right now uh, going through some trials because of the death of loved ones and father we pray that you would uh, be there with them and father that your holy spirit uh, would hold them up and be uh, a comfort to them during this time lord we always want to be sure to pray for this nation of ours we pray for a revival we pray for our leaders uh, lord that your wisdom uh, would uh, give them the power to make decisions that would be right for this nation. And Lord, we pray uh, for all of the unspoken requests that I know that are out there right now. And Father, you tell us to just come to your throne of grace in our time of need. And Father, hear our petitions today. And we ask that you bless and Lord, that you hear our prayer as we go through this time of little devotional that we have today. May you strengthen us uh, to be the witnesses that you called us to be. For it's in Christ's name that I pray. Amen. In Matthew chapter 5, which most of us know is Sermon on the Mount, uh, I was reading that as I was watching and listening on TV uh, to some of the uh, things that are happening to Christians around the world and even here at home, how Christians are being low rated and, and some even persecuted for their faith and their belief. And as I was reading back through this Sermon on the Mount, uh, I listened to what Jesus was telling the multitudes and how he said, blessed are the poor in spirit for theirs is the kingdom of God. Blessed are those who mourn for they shall be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they shall be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called sons of God. Now verse 10 is the one I want us to look, 10, 11, and 12. Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when you are reviled, or in other words, when you're uh, insulted and persecuted, saying all kind of evil things against you for, and falsely for my sake. He says, rejoice and be exceedingly glad Great is your reward in heaven, for they, in heaven, for so they persecuted the prophets who were before you. And I began to think about it and listening to all of the things that Jesus said about blessed. Blessed means being uh, 
satisfied inwardly, uh, not with everything that's going on around us. Uh, because to be blessed of God doesn't require our, our outward circumstances to be great. Sometimes they are not. And so when we look at that, I, I just it just sort of caught my attention that Jesus doesn't say, blessed are you if people revile or insult you, but when? When they do. In other words, Jesus is saying to us as Christians, as his followers, you can count on it. There's going to be some persecution. There's going to be some uh, insults that are, are, are given uh, toward you. Jesus is saying those who live their lives as his followers in this world is going to draw the eye of this world. I mean, we see that all the way. Uh, people make fun of us or they call us Bible thumpers or, or so many other things. They use abusive words and a lot of times uh, viciously mocking us and what we stand for and who we stand for. You see, the world is not a friend to God. And because it's not a friend to God, it's not going to be a friend to you and I who follow the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, as obedient followers, the world will cruelly insult you and I. Uh, they don't want to hear about us. Remember, as Jesus stood before that, at the Sanhedrin after his arrest in the Garden of Gethsemane, uh, Jesus was spat upon and beaten and taunted by their word, uh, prophesied to us if you're a prophet. Uh, and as he was being sentenced later on uh, uh, to crucifixion by Pilate, uh, when I think about that, again, Jesus was severely beaten. He was spit upon and he was mocked even by the soldiers, uh, the Roman soldiers. You can find that in Mark chapter 15. Uh, why was it? Because the life that Jesus lived was an offense to the conscience of those who didn't believe that he was the Messiah. And today, whenever we preach or we share Jesus, um, the conscience of the world becomes pricked. And uh, there'll always be that struggle. Uh, between the kingdom of God and the, and the kingdom of men who love darkness more than they love the Lord. Jesus makes it clear that living for him will bring insults from others. Why? Because you and I, as followers of the Jesus Christ, are separated from living as the world lives. We live a different world, uh, a different way in life. We are from a different world now. Our residency is in heaven. Uh, while we had to live here in this world, uh, we don't live like the world lives. Uh, and so being faithful to Christ can even cause friends and acquaintances or even loved ones to say some hurtful things or some cutting things uh, to us that are very painful. Uh, when confronted with the truth of God's word uh, and they're not willing to follow that word, a lot of time they're offended that you even spoke to them about it. Um, but it is our job, uh, our duty, uh, because of the nature of the service that we render unto God uh, that we tell them the truth about what God's Word says in a loving way. You know, the ungodly or those who are living in sin don't like to have that sin exposed. Uh, they, don't, they don't want uh, no God other than themselves telling them what needs to be done. And uh, I remember in one of my churches that I pastored, uh, uh, the young couple were not members of the church, but they had been coming to church for a little while. Uh, they were living uh, a life that was not pleasing to God. They were living together out of wedlock, and 
one evening the young man and she came and he wanted to know about accepting Jesus Christ and being baptized. And in love, I shared with the young man and the couple uh, to accept Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior meant that you're willing to turn away from sin and, and the sin of living together. Um, that if you really wanted to repent of your sins, they should need to separate for a time and then remarry. Uh, but that was what they needed to do. That's what it meant. Salvation or receiving Jesus Christ means that you turn away from the known sin in your life and you turn to Jesus for that forgiveness. With that, he looked at me and he said, well, you just keep Jesus. I'll live the life the way I want to live it. Uh, he was not willing to accept God's standard uh, for salvation, uh, which is repentance and faith in him. Uh, he wasn't willing to turn from his sin, so there was nothing I could do, and I lost a friend because of that, and I shared that in love. Um, and sadly, many cannot accept Jesus as Savior because coming to him will violate what their own personal uh, desires are, and that's to live the way that they want to live. Uh, they don't want to turn from sin. There is nothing else I can do or can say because we know that the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. So when we turn to Jesus, uh, we're to do away with that sin that's in our life. Um, the world cannot accept Jesus until they realize that they have a need to be saved to start with. And a lot of people don't feel like they're doing anything or they're that bad uh, that they need to come to Jesus. Uh, but what they will do is insult you um, because you dare to share the truth of the gospel with them in love. You can share it in love all you want, but it doesn't mean that they're going to receive it in love. Jesus was the most loving, caring man that ever was who knew no sin. And yet... They ridiculed and they persecuted him and eventually they hung him on the cross to die for your and our sins. One thing is for sure, when you and I as believers are pleasing God, I promise you we won't be pleasing the world system. We'll be insulted, we'll be persecuted, there'll be false accusations made against us. But Jesus says, when people say false things about us, we need to be assured of this fact, that we can count ourselves as being blessed because it's on account of Him that we are being persecuted, not account of but us. You know, Jesus makes it clear that, that one who lives a holy life dedicated to Him will provoke persecution from those who don't know Jesus as Lord and Savior. Satan and the world opposes us because we belong to Jesus, because we don't walk the way of the world anymore. He said, Jesus told his disciples, he warned them, those that were following him and us even today. If the world hates you, he said, you know that it has hated me before it hated you in John chapter 15. Verse 18, so what? What do we do? We think about the good news, the good news that Jesus said. Jesus promised a double blessing on Christians who were persecuted for his name's sake, for righteousness sake. And the promise to those who are persecuted for righteousness sake is the kingdom of God. It is the kingdom of God now, right here on this earth and forever. You know, no service or sacrifice for the Lord will be wasted. He will be, he, you will be blessed. Because Jesus had promised blessings, no matter what the world does to us, it cannot affect the promise that we have in Jesus Christ. It's now ours. At the moment we believed upon the Lord Jesus Christ, all the promises of God became ours to grab hold of. 
Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. The, that means right now, I, we have a residency in heaven while we're still living in our own earth. And one day, eternally, that will be our home where we will stay with Jesus throughout eternity. So when, not if, persecution or slander or other things come to you because you are a Christian and for Christ's sake, start rejoicing. For great is your reward in heaven. Jesus said that in verse 12. Great is your reward in heaven. Many have already received that reward because they withstood all of the persecution and all of the slander and even were martyred for the cause of Christ. May you and I remember the blessings. Blessed are you when they revile and persecute you and say all kinds of evil against you and falsely for my sake. Rejoice and be exceedingly glad for great is your reward in heaven for so they persecuted the prophets who were before you. And Jesus went on to say, you are the salt of the earth. But if the salt loses its flavor, how can it be seasoned again? It's good for nothing but to be thrown out and trampled underfoot by man. We are the light of this world. Let your light so shine that they may see your good works and glorify God. And when persecution comes, say, thank you, Jesus, that I'm being counted worthy enough as your child to be persecuted for your name's sake. May you have a good evening. Look forward to seeing you next Wednesday night right here in our fellowship hall. Let us pray. Father, we thank you for your word. Lord, when we talk about persecution and we talk about uh, false accusations and things that can be against us. Father, help us to realize that when you're for us, no one can be against us. And Father, because people revile us because of who we are, let us remember that they did it to you first. And Father, that should encourage us to be more of a witness to take a stand for what is right. And Lord, according to your word, and Father, you will bless every effort. Nothing will be in vain, nothing will be wasted that we do for your sake and for your kingdom. Bless our church, Father. We bless those who are listening here tonight. Lord, may they be encouraged. May it give them courage to be the witness to a lost and dying world that the, that the world needs to hear, regardless of what they say about us. For it's in Christ's name I pray. Amen.